All right, people, let's say we use this episode to just go kill a bunch of stuff, huh? How's that sound? Thought we'd go clean up the streets of Lowtown and the docks. Get rid of the last of these gangs, turn them in, get our final reward, and then we'll be pretty much done with that for the game. As far as the uh, random ambushes around every corner, we try to walk the streets at night. Kind of a recurring theme through all the acts, and this is no different. Also, this is where I gave Meryl's tactics a good solid test run. Make sure she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. And uh, I think I, I may have the clip that I stole for the build video. I think it may have come from uh, one of these segments here. Where we stop off in the, in the hangman and uh, take a good solid look at him. I was so happy when we did this. You, you just can't know how many hours I tormented over her stupid tactics, just not getting them right. It was it became a matter of pride with me. Like, you know, I know a little bit about tactics here in this game, and uh, I couldn't do it. And uh, tell you what, Wynn gave me the same runaround in Origins, and I, I still never figured out hers. If there was ever a solution for that, well, I, I certainly never found it. And uh, no one else has that I know of. I've done some research, too. If uh, somebody else had come up with a solution for it, then... I would think I would have found it. But, uh, yeah, anyway. And I was thinking this was going to be the same thing. But, uh, lo and behold, got lucky. I guess even a blind dog finds a bone every once in a while. And so there you go. I'm also going to look around here to see if... Uh, yeah, we got random loot and stuff. Crafting materials would be the most important thing, of course. some point in here. I think uh, Meryl does take an amount of damage on her own. Um, when these situations, I basically uh, started getting mobbed and just basically um, left them to it just to see what she would do. But, uh, I did some I did some thorough test runs also, you know, I mean, just, just to make sure. And um, A couple situations I would like take control of her make her take damage, go draw a bunch of heat to her and just stand there till she was to a certain, you know, low health point and then I would just back off and see what she would do. But, uh, in fact, I think this may, may be it right here where she, you know, happened on its own. She was taking damage. She'll get below the 50% mark at some point and then uh, you'll see her deactivate her stuff. You'll see her mana bar pop up. If you look down to the bottom left, there it goes. All right, so she turns off. Wrath, uh, I mean, Blood of the First, so that she can heal herself, and she does. Alright, now her mana goes back up, and you say, now this is normally where she used to get stuck, right here. Okay, now we're not in a fight, so she doesn't have to pattern through her, uh, her attack behavior at the moment, but she will here in a second. Alright, she turns off Wrath of the Elven, there she goes, and now she's got enough mana pool in reserve to activate Blood of the First again, which she's not going to do till... An, we get into another fight, but that's about how long right there it would have taken for her to cycle through that in a fight, which basically means that she sits back and relies mostly on basic attacks until her mana gets up high enough to where she can uh, reactivate Blood of the First. And then uh, that allows her to draw off of her health pool for all of her active spells and reserve her entire mana bar for all of her sustained spells. So she's a buff battery and a spell battery, uh, essentially. Supplying buffs for the party with, you know, elemental weapons and stuff. And then, uh, of course, her, her own stuff like uh, rock armor, um, Wrath of the Elven. Which basically allows her to get a little bit of healing. It's kind of an AoE damage inflicting thing um, that surrounds her. It's like an aura of pain, so to speak. And it also heals her a little bit as long as she has someone in, in range. But she usually stays out of people's way. But should she get mobbed, she can at least get a little bit of healing from that. Ideally, you don't ever want her to get hurt to the point where she does have to heal herself, because that's, uh... Um... That kind of takes away, uh... 
that takes all the big guns out of her arsenal for a little while until she can get everything reactivated again. But at least she will do it. That was uh, that was the main point. And if there's an even better way than this to settle her tactics, well, I, I haven't seen or heard about it. But I can I can say that uh, I'm the author of this particular set of tactics. I did uh, come up with this. I think I, I paid my dues though. I put in the hours. I earned it. I know there's an assassin. There he is. I was about to say, I saw him flipping around. I can assassinate too, asshole. Alright, so I'm going to farm for as many mobs as I can here. Might get to the point where we can kind of duck out and uh, of the area. We've got to go stop at Gamlin's house at some point. So I think maybe we can duck out and see if we can't get some of these to respawn. That'd be cool. But uh, first, I'm going to see whatever mobs I can find. Now, these guys, um, I'm not sure what's up with these. This isn't uh, dis disgruntled. I, I have no idea. I think this is just a random mob. This isn't one of the gangs that we're actually fighting right now. Yeah, I don't know what's the story with those guys. Three points, though. I'll take it. Okay, now this is the mob that we're fighting right now. So I don't know what I don't know what's up with that. Doesn't matter. Free XP. That's all I care about. Alright, and thus the reason I have my mages set to friggin' petrify rogues. Assassinate too, dude. Doesn't feel too good, does it? Beautiful. It's over a thousand there, because that's that's one of the mobs we're supposed to be fighting, and then that random mob back there at the corner. I, I don't know what's up with them, like I say, but uh, whatever. I'll take it. We kicked their ass, got paid for it. Good with that. All right, let's see if maybe we can get a few more to spawn here in a second. Do some last look arounds for loot. So we don't have the little card pop up to show us that we've uh, beat the last lieutenant out here to reveal where their base is, so I think it's safe to say we could uh, leave the area and come back and maybe get a whole new set of mobs. It's better when the streets are quiet at night. Tell you what, people aren't aren't out much many, anymore, are they? Okay, I think uh, this is kind of a this is kind of a nice nice little storyline here with Gamlin. Actually, he still comes around a lot. He still comes across as kind of a coarse asshole, but uh, honestly, I see a side of him here. That if I want to be fair, if I want to look at myself first and look at him second, I'd have to say that uh, there's some some things that are understandable and that people can fall into coarse behavior um, just as a result of just bad decisions and 
bad luck in life and uh, wind up in a bad place. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. That note mentioned the gem of Karoshek. What's that? It's nothing. Never mind. This gem sounds pretty impressive. It has a name and everything. Ah, don't be stupid. I lost everything chasing that gem. Our fortune, our home, even Mara. Who's Mara? She's... None of your concern. That's who she is. Why don't you head back to your fancy house in Hightown and stay out of my damn business? Nothing on the walls, huh? Seems like there was something to look at. So, you've done well for yourself. I had my doubts the first time I saw you, but I guess there was something to that hawk fellow Leandra ran off with after all. You certainly produced an amazing daughter. Your mother would be proud. I just wish mother had lived to see me become champion. I know Leandra, and she'd be absolutely glowing from all the praise that's been heaped on you. I don't say this often, but with Bethany locked in the gallows, you're the only real family I have left. For a long time, I thought the Amel line in Kirkwall would end at me. I'm glad you pulled it out of the grave. Now, I'm seeing a side to gambling here, and like I say, if I want to be fair, okay, before I start throwing rocks, I gotta make sure I'm not standing on a pile of rocks myself, or I, else I might slip and fall, right? I mean, we all make mistakes. It looks like he was chasing after fortune, pulled the old Indiana Jones, gonna go raid the uh, Lost Temple of Doom type thing, and it didn't work out, and he lost out, and it, and it looks to me like he lost everything, and, well, some men will drown their sorrows, some men will fall into, you know, gambling and just whatever as they feel they're an absolute failure and they never pick themselves back up from that, and uh, him being alone here in the city with a fortune just to squander, it looks like he did so. And finally said, well, you know, in for a dime, in for a dollar. I've lost everything up to this point. Might as well just uh, accept my fate and just, you know, be the loser that I've become. And oh, wow, I just got one shot by the stupid rope. Okay, like I say, that shit wasn't free. Little shit. Okay, this is probably their lieutenant. Yeah, no, not anymore. But uh, nice that Anders picked him right back up. Doing his job like he's supposed to. What's up? Anyway, you know, so, I mean, we can make mistakes, we can make bad decisions, and it looks like he has paid for them. And that's kind of the point, is once someone's paid for their mistakes, right, um, I don't need to heap any more uh, pun It's not for me to decide that they haven't paid the price enough, and while I sit over here in my cushy little lifestyle, to look down my nose at him and judge him from afar and say, well, at least I'm not like that guy over there. That just makes me an asshole, you know. Um, he's not asking anything from us anymore. You know, you come by and you can see dialogue. Hey, you want to pass a few coins so you can go get a, a drink and a hooker, you know, type of thing. And he's, you know, I don't want to say he's content with his lot, but I think he's he's uh, basically settled, you know, come to terms with the fact that this is his life and this is what he did with it. And, you know, he's kind of responsible for that. And words don't come easy for him, but he gave us kind words anyway. And I really have to respect somebody where words don't come to you real easy. You may not be real real fluent, you know. Um, you may not be able to heap, you know, all the fancy, classy um, compliments and sentimentalities on somebody. So, yeah, you know, he's, he's not a poet by heart by any means, but he tried. And that says a lot. I mean, that really kind of does. He's like, I know I don't say it much because it's, it's awkward for him. He's not comfortable with that. He's used to dealing with the baser elements of the world and his lifestyle. You know, the hookers and the thugs and the, you know... Uh, people like that. I mean, we see the kind of people he hangs around with when we first um, come into the city. But you know what? He came and met us in the gates. He didn't have to. He was hiding a pretty nasty secret. Is that essentially the fortune that was left to his sister? He basically took it and squandered it. And uh, you know, so yeah. And, and there's there's a lot to be said for that. That's, that's messed up, right? But he'll tell you, I I can't undo it. If he could, would he? Yeah, probably now, right? But he'd probably undo a lot of things, but apparently in chasing this fortune, he's lost his wife. Um, and maybe even more than that, right? Which you may find out later on in his little personal quest. 
that will all extend from that stupid wallet mallet. <laughs> I don't know where they came up with the idea to center a quest on the wallet mallet, but there you have it. All right, um, we'll follow that out, and we'll find out he's lost a lot. And, uh, you know, like I say, I think he's just kind of come to terms with his life as it is and just settled on, you know, that's the way it's going to be type of thing. And uh, maybe... Maybe him having paid his price, paid his dues, maybe um, maybe he has some, some good fortune. Maybe one stroke of good luck finally come his way, and maybe he could turn some things around before it's, you know, just completely too late. You know, he's at the end of his years anyway. Um, why not? You know, why not? What, what, what does he owe us? Nothing. Uh, things have turned out just fine for us. Uh, what do we have left anyway? You know, he grieved from the heart for, for mother. That says a lot. You see someone's reaction to something. You know, he could have just not given a shit less, but but he did. He cared a lot. It killed him. And he had the right idea. Friggin' mage and magic just destroying everything, and, and look what it's done. It's even taken mother now, you know, his sister. And uh, he's legitimately torn up over that. And so, can, can can he get something back? Can he Can he salvage something of the life that he squandered? And yeah, yeah, he really needs to, actually. And if I can be any part of that, I can I can look past you. Know, things are going just fine for me, you know? And uh and any loss I've suffered isn't isn't his fault, you know. So so yeah, so yeah, yeah, learn to forgive. Learn to forgive and, and forget that type of stuff and realize that someone else's price that they pay for their stuff isn't for me to sit here and, and uh look down my nose at just because I'm not suffering it myself. If the tables were turned, had I made those mistakes, I'd want a little mercy in my last years of life. I'd want, you know, at least some good thing maybe to come my way, even if I don't deserve it, quote-unquote. I mean, shit. <laughs> you know, Gamlin hasn't murdered and killed people. He's just been, just, you know, a slouch. And he's paid that price. Like I say, he's gotten what he's earned, and that's enough. That's enough. So yeah, I would like to see some good thing come his way and him at least trying to do right, trying to say the right thing, trying to be nice. That's enough, as long as you're trying. You know, most people just don't do that. They'd rather spend their effort, you know, judging and condemning and shitting on the next guy. Screw that. So anyway, so I'm seeing, I'm seeing some good qualities there, you know. Like I say, if you can overlook his character, which is, isn't for me to judge anyway, because I'm not perfect. If you overlook that, then, uh, he's not so bad. He's not so bad. Friggin' another assassin. Oh, shit. <laughs> These little assassins are just all over me. All right. All right, so this is what they're following here. This desire demon has apparently consumed these people's minds, and they're all serving her. Uh, we see that in the Circle Tower in Origins. Where the Templars themselves have been uh, seduced completely by this desire demon let loose in the Circle Tower by one of the Blood Mages or something. Whatever, but... Uh, and apparently that's what's going on here, something along those lines. We got an assassin heading that way? Yeah, we do. See? They keep coming out of the woodwork like cockroaches. And we've lost... And it? No, we lost Abilene. How the hell did that happen? She must have got backstabbed a couple times in a row. I wasn't paying attention. Well, that's what I get for talking. Right, well, we got this demon by herself now. Wow, lots of gifts. Good deal. Kind of want... Alright, so let's see if we can get some last minute loots here, and then uh, we'll go turn this in to our friend in the Hanged Man. And then we'll go after the last set of thugs. It should be down there at the docks. Um, honestly, I don't remember that one being as tough as this one. I think this is one of the harder ones here. The ones in, in Hightown could have been pretty nasty, but uh, if you can get the mages down um, quick and early, then it's it's not so bad. This, this I remember being... The kind of tough one, but we kind of breeze through this. It, uh, just, you know, uh, the right tactic here and the right, and the right, I don't know, um, the right 
ability or skill pick there can really make a huge difference in the way your your party behaves as a whole. And I, I think we've uh, we've got it going pretty good here. Start exper experimenting and playing around with uh, with my build a little bit as we go along here towards the end. Because I already got my build video out of the way, so I'll try new things, all new setups and stuff. Um, your equipment and how you arrange it can make a huge difference. So. We're going to look at some different things. I've run with these DLC axes here just for giggles because I thought they looked really cool. Um, they're in, in some ways better, in some ways worse than other weapons. All kinds of different weapons have their uh, strong points, so I'll switch these out. I'm really looking for uh, Finesse and Spider's Heart. Twin daggers that you can get. Um, one of them you buy, the other one you get from doing Zevran's little, uh, little personal thing, which uh, we'll get around to. But then I'll, I'll probably run with those daggers. One of them is not the best dagger, quote-unquote, but uh, it's a good one. It looks cool, and it pretty much matches finesse, basically. They have slight differences if you look up really close, but from a distance, they're just two Dalish daggers, and that's my absolute favorite style weapon in the game, I think. Although these axes have been pretty cool. I think they look pretty cool. Twin hand axes, kind of like that. Twin scythes, almost. Anyway, this is uh this is the clip that I stole for the build video. This is where I got it from. This is where we were at. I had uh you know, got our tactics right and all that. But uh the the secret all along was to um only activate that one particular skill, Wrath of the Elven. That was that was the one that was getting in the way. That was putting her below that uh seventy percent mark that she needed in her mana pool to um activate Blood of the First. And once she had that activated, then everything else just basically comes off uh, whatever she's got left in reserves. You know, if she's only got two mana left and something takes, you know, 40% of her mana, well, it's going to only cost one mana, essentially. But she can activate it as long as she has at least a point of mana in her pool left over. But the, the main thing was to keep it over that 70% mark so that she could activate Blood of the First. And that, and that, that was it. And so you can always go to the build video if you want to see the uh, the pattern for her tactics. And I would strongly recommend about the first mm, six, seven, eight slots um, copying it directly from that because um, I found playing around and, and really sticking my nose in the tactics and figuring that one out um, is that the order which you put the tactics in can make a huge difference. Like, I've even caught my the AI not healing because um, the... Uh, Oh, when your health is below 25%, use a health potion tactic was too low in the uh, in the order of tactics, and it's like they would never get around to it. If um, apparently, and I don't know if this is always the case, but at least sometimes, if if they have a tactic that they can't activate, like this is this is also the beauty behind Meryl's tactics is until she can activate Blood of the First, which is her absolute first tactic to turn that on as long as her health is above 75%. That's the specific reason I, I said it that way, is if she does heal later on and turns it off, that in healing, she'll get her health back above the 75% mark. That's when she needs to, to turn it on. Well, if she goes into a fight and she's at full health, she's going to turn it on anyway. So it works the same as quote-unquote any, right? But it also um, allows her to turn it back on once her health gets back up above a certain point. Um, if it's not above that certain point, if she's taking major, major damage, it's really not going to matter anyway. But if she gets knocked down again below the 50% mark, I'd like her to be able to heal again if she can. Or even be healed by Anders, possibly. Don't see that trigger very often. I think he's in the habit of not healing her. That's how it appears, because uh, she can't be healed when she's got Blood of the First active. So I guess he's like, well, fuck it, I just won't, I just won't heal her at all, type of thing. But um, the order that you have those in is, is really important, because when she um, does turn it off, she won't really do anything else until she turns it back on because it's her first tactic and she like it's stuck in a loop it seems like and uh, how I figured that out was I, I didn't have her Wrath of the Elven tactic set yet and I noticed she gets stuck in a in a activate blood of the first loop but she couldn't because she didn't have the mana reserve for it and uh, and so she just wouldn't do anything else at all right and um, that's what helped me figure it out I'm like okay well, if that's the case, then I can keep her from turning Wrath of the Elven back on until she does have the mana for it. 
if she's going to stay stuck in that loop. And so that's when I switched the Wrath of the Elven tactics up for her to deactivate it first. So she would never get, so she would never loop through to activating it until she could activate um, Blood of the First. Anyway, I, this may, may be sounding confusing, but it'll make sense if you just look at the tactics the way I had them set and uh, look at the order in which they're in. And uh, in hindsight, it's almost genius. It was essentially just a matter of uh, uh, deduction, you know, figuring out what didn't work to finally figure out, figure out what did. But then after all was said and done, I'm like, wow, all the... Oh man, all how it's just wide open how you can word the tactics in Dragon Age 2 it, to do all kinds of different things to get your AI. It's, it's 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 neat. It's a puzzle in and of itself. It's like a mini game within the game. Setting tactics. It's it's cool. I I'm, I just enjoy the crap out of it. Anyway, so there you have it. All right, so we got that. Um, let's see. These guys are not so bad. Like I was saying, this this isn't that bad. I don't remember what kind of boss they have at their base here though. been a long time since I did this, but I, I know this is the last gang, and if we can get these guys out of the way and go back, and w when you turn it in, you get like a reward for having cleared out every gang. Uh, you get some extra gold. I'm sure we'll get a bunch of XP. It seems like you get a weapon. Um, and, and I think if you turn these in one at a time, you get like multiple copies of that weapon too, actually. But uh, anyway... Here we go. Get all these mobs to spawn. Wow. You see Meryl just outright slaughtered that mob by herself. Let's see, that's what I'm talking about. She's such a beast. She really, really is. You don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, do you? That takes too long. The idea with, with the rogue is to tear down individual targets really, really fast. So you can move the one to the next. I can't do AoE stuff, but I can take out several targets in quick succession. Almost as fast as, say, a warrior can, you know, hacking away at all of them at the same time with a with sword, you know. Nice. Alright, we're finding these Canari swords as we go around. I found uh, the merchants sell them. They're pretty expensive and essentially what you're paying for is the XP. Because you get some ridiculous amount of XP for each one. It's, I don't know, it's 800, 1200 a piece for each sword or something. And there's probably a bonus when you've turned in all of them type of thing. Um, anyway, uh, so if it's a few gold to pay for, you know, a thousand or so XP or even more, then yeah, I'm, that's, that's actually a, a decent price. Especially considering we have money. Playing a rogue isn't near as expensive as uh, playing a warrior. Warrior has key items, uh, mostly having to do with um, immunity to stun, immunity to knockdown, immunity to knock back, immunity to critical hits, and there's equipment that has all those um, here and there. Yeah, this guy needs to go. This guy needs to go right now. Oh, little bastard. Yeah, if they get to heal, if you can't kill them fast enough to get let them to keep them from healing, then they're gonna get a free shot on somebody. He's almost a boss, isn't he? Wow. Got another assassin? Really? Twin lieutenants, huh? Okay, well, that's awesome. Little shit. And he's healed again. Little shit. I don't need him uh, thinking about me, though. Yeah. He needs to keep his eyes off me. I got him. I got him. He's down. Little shit. 
I guess each act, there's a new mob that spawns down here too. Good to know. Sometimes that comes with new sets of traps though too, so be careful for that. Another, another advantage to playing a rogue is detect traps for yourself. You don't have to keep switching to Varric to find traps and disarm them. In fact, when I'm done uh, editing this right here, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go do some streaming. It's, uh, let's see, what's today? Thursday? Still really, really early in the morning here. It's not even 5 a.m. yet, but uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and start early. Stream for most of the day. Upload the next video. Actually, uh, this video probably won't come out till. I'll probably upload this Saturday. I try to upload one every day. Um, day or two ago, I couldn't because YouTube was broken. <laughs> it, it gave me this. Oh my gosh, what was it? Um, 800 minutes to upload the video or something. I guess the servers were so either backed up or I was put in a queue that was so far back that it wasn't going to let me literally upload it till tomorrow anyway type of deal. And so I was just like, well, I guess I just don't get a video up today. I wasn't going to... Uh, lock up, you know, so much of my bandwidth, you know, for the whole day, just for a video that I couldn't upload. Yeah, screw that. So, yeah, I think I went and did some streaming instead. I was like, alright, well, that's fine. I'm gonna be like that about it. I'll make up for it later. There's days where I'll, I'll put up two or three. I, I've i I've got, uh, oh, jeez. See, I've only been at this for about a year or so, and... Got to, oh, it's in the 600 range, and I've deleted well over 100 videos also on top of that. So I don't know if I've averaged necessarily a, a two a day. Close to it. Close to it. So definitely well well above the one day mark. Anyway, yeah, there's uh, this is be the second time that YouTube's done that. Or for some reason, oh, that must be the lieutenant right there. Good deal. Hopefully this isn't the only mob that we respawn by leaving the area and coming back. But, uh, yeah, it happened one other day, too. It, was, it gave me some ridiculous amount of time to upload my video, and I was like, you know, something's broken on their end. I'll just let them work through that and come back later. Considering some of these videos get 20 views over the course of a week, I think one day here or one day there doesn't probably make that big of a difference. As long as I know I'm staying true to my work schedule. If uh, YouTube doesn't want to comply, well, that, whatever. I guess I'll just have to get over it. That's it. Oh, slave hunters, huh? Alright. I think uh, there's something to do with Fenris in this act that leans towards slavers and all that stuff. I think we'll kind of let him find some closure in his little personal deal. So, uh, I guess it just, it's fitting that we find, uh, Deventer mercenaries here hunting down slaves. Um, they need to get out of Kirkwall though, you know? They're trespassing. It's kind of on them. They meet a bad end trying to do bad things in an area where they're not even supposed to be. Oh well. That's their price to pay. I suppose I don't have anything for slavers anyway. Take pleasure in killing these pieces of crap. Come to think of it, if their base here is like a dock, where you go in, basically any side quest or little mission that leads to a dock is going to be bad news. Pretty much. And then if we can get a mob here and down at the very end, down there, that'd be fabulous. Let's get some of these archers out of the way. Make a good deal. Nice. Get the attention off me. Let me get this archer out of here. Yeah. Bye bye, archer. All right, you.
um, kind of see something here. You notice I, I go obscure um, here and there. I think there, I think it's one of my passives or something. I'm not sure, but it gives me a, like a very small chance to basically stealth. And it, I, I don't really specifically stealth, but, I, but I'm obscure. Or if I do stealth, it doesn't last for a second because I'm in the middle of attacking. And you break stealth when you attack. So anyway. But anytime I do stealth, I stay obscure for a while. Now that is one of my passives. And um, essentially while I'm obscure, every hit is a critical. And um, then you can get other passives where as long as you're flanking, every hit is an automatic critical. And then when your enemy is stunned, every hit is a critical. Um, when you're in stealth, every hit is a critical. You know, if you go into stealth, you might want to come out of it with like a twin fangs type thing. Guarantee a critical hit. And stuff like that. Very similar to the Inquisition build. I would have to say I probably got some ideas from my Inquisition build from this right here. Um, in Inquisition, you can even take it a step further, where you you can do you you can hit so hard coming out of stealth, and you can um, go into stealth as backstab instead of stealthing and backstabbing. You ex you basically go into the backstab, and that results in stealth, and that adds a whole different dynamic into that build. But uh, this is very similar, and so you'll notice it's mostly basic attacks. Now, assassinate is is a beast in and of itself. I, I don't deny that. But yeah, see, like right here, critical chance 100% with stealth. Basically, you want all your attacks. Um, that's what the shadow tree is really about, is getting a lot of criticals. And then the assassin tree is maximizing your criticals, you know, getting more critical damage. And the shadow tree also has a passive for that also. So um, with the assassin tree, it's, it's basically on your cunning. Notice I've dumped just about every spare point I've had into cunning. Um, a few into dexterity when I needed them for equipment. But uh, aside from that, um, everything else has gone into cunning. And so it's all about um, doing as much damage as possible. Very much a glass cannon type build. Although we have enough survivability to get by. But the basic idea is if you have enough survivability to take a hit, right? You, sh you could probably get into stealth and get out of there and let Anders heal you and then go back to business. That's, that's the gist of it. Does it always work? Well, no. You know, nothing's perfect. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty beast. I think my overall numbers... Um, I haven't put up the highest criticals you've ever seen in Dragon Age 2, but I'm putting up steady criticals all the time. My, um, overall numbers are just, are just kind of through the roof most of the time. You know, damage over time type of deal. Um, when you stack up enough criticals on basic attacks, those numbers really add up. You notice we're tearing down targets really quick. And that's good. You know, that's, that's kind of like the whole idea. If everybody else is doing their job, set up a few cross-class combos, and they... They trigger a lot of that amongst themselves. I've I've like gone into mobs and seen mobs that are almost dead or just dead outright by the time I get there, type of thing. Because uh, you know somebody's I don't know Aveline staggered them, then you know one of my mages hit him with chain lightning or you know something like that, or I inadvertently disorient somebody with a backstab or some kind of attack, and they immediately trigger that with like what is it stone fist? I think. In fact, uh, once and this happens very 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 seldom if ever right but uh, if you're in direct path of that enemy when you disorient them and your mage busts them with stone fists it might hit you instead <laughs> it's pretty funny actually but uh yeah it's it's not like a big aoe effect so the yeah, stone fist actually uh i think they it takes on an aoe type quality in inquisition but uh anyway all right so we're just going to uh work on aveline's tankiness here a little bit and get everyone well, you know, just dress up now. It's it's basically basically the builds are done. You know, that's why I did the build video when I did. I actually did it a little bit later than what I planned, but uh, it was basically let's just finish up Act Act Two, get our stuff squared away, and then we'll just look at where we're at. Um, I'll also do a warrior build. I think my warrior is uh, um, it's it's just as fun to play as this one, honestly, and 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 for for the most part, just as effective when everything's going right. Like I said, the only slight downside is that with the warrior, um, it's either you play off tank or you have a tank and you, and you miss a mage and it takes Meryl out of the equation. And you really don't want to do that because Meryl's an absolute beast. Okay, so we got a, uh, okay, we've got a blood mage controlling all these people's minds. No, that's, that's a slaver mage, isn't it? All right, that's a Deventer Magister over there. Yeah. I'm take pleasure in killing this one.
Okay, we're keeping her on the defensive now, too. Because if you're doing enough damage to the mobs, and the mage tries to watch him or herself. Let's see if we can take her out now. No, not yet. God damn it. Got her staggered. Oh, nice. See, that's Aveline doing her damn thing. Yeah, see, they're resistant to whatever I'm using right now. I really need to make more effort to uh, change my mage's staves. I forget. We'll go into battles, and they're not doing much. And sometimes I don't really notice because my, my rogue is kind of handling up. But uh, we could be killing things even faster. Got to consider, if Meryl has you buffed with the right elemental weapon, it can make a huge difference. Especially when fighting demons. Give her a lightning staff. Oh my gosh. I don't think any demons are immune to lightning. I don't think there's a single one. Alright, so we've still got one or two random enemies in here somewhere. It'll give us... Uh... There it is. Okay, right there. But it'll give us a little... Uh... A little note that we finished the quest. Once we got everybody. Which we still don't... Was that a Canary sword? Interesting. Okay. Apparently, if you want to get all those Canary swords, you got to be thorough. you got to do everything. But it's uh, well worth it. I mean, the XP is just through the roof. I think if you if you decline any gold for doing it, I think you get a weapon. I, I think you get a two-handed weapon. It's not a bad one, actually. Although, the best two-handed weapon, I think, in the game is um, found in Fenris's little side quest. And I think that weapon right there is an identical copy of the one we're going to get from turning in this last this last mob. If we can actually finish off this last mob. They're probably hiding up here around the corner. Yeah, they are. Yeah. We killed everything so fast they didn't even spawn, essentially. That should be it. There we go. All right, good deal. All right, so we can go turn this in, get paid. Get another copy of that weapon. Or two, even. I don't remember what the final XP bonus is and... The final money, I think I think we get like five gold for the last mob or something like that. It's good that we've turned in everyone individually though. Cause you, you get a lot more gold from that. I know if you turn in like all three mobs at once, like say before the end of each act type thing, um you 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 lose money. Ooh, what Isabella wants. Wow, seven. I hope we will be grateful as always. Eric will make you I take my story, leave. I'm sure. Enjoy, champion. Courtesy of the friends of Red Jenny. Oh, friends and Red Jenny. All right. Well, that's cool. So we've been killing the big guys for the little people, and they've all had it coming. So I have to say that the friends of Red Jenny. Well, sometimes the little guys need some justice too, right? Yeah, we can deal with Isabel in a little bit. All right, I'm sure she's got her own little side quest. Thanks for watching. You want to subscribe? Click that button up top. If you want to catch the rest of this Let's Play up to this point, click that image in the middle. Until later, I will catch you guys later, and y'all take care. Bye bye.